Welcome to the Amazon Relational Database Services walkthrough. Now obviously there are two choices for a lot of SQL Server administrators, SharePoint administrators, anyone looking to leverage the Microsoft stack or otherwise as far as databases go when it comes to RDS or EC2. EC2 is of course a fully managed server which gives the individual the full ability to RDP into the server, SSH, um, into the server, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. RDS is different in that it specifically only exposes the database shell. Now, obviously, we have a lot of different services that are available to us inside of Amazon Web Services. Of course, we have EC2, the EC2 Container Service, Elastic Beanstalk, S3, which is the file system, CloudFront, which is the CDN service. The list goes on. Of course, um, one of my favorite ones is the Trusted Advisor, which is kind of an easy one click. Um, automatic analysis of your entire AWS infrastructure. But let's focus specifically not on DynamoDB or Redshift, which is the petabyte scalable, um, basically MPP version of Postgres, which they've put into the cloud. Let's focus specifically on RDS. And we're going to spin up an RDS instance here pretty quickly. And uh, the first thing about RDS, you'll notice that I'm in the Northern Virginia region. There are multiple regions, including a GovCloud region. Um, some people avoiding are currently avoiding the Gulf Cloud region because of the latency of it being no nested on the West Coast. But you do have the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and a couple other um, pseudo-governmental organizations who are leveraging it on the West Coast. Um, so let's go ahead and let's actually launch a DB instance now. Aurora DB is a proprietary DB from Amazon, and uh, it basically is a full MySQL compliant database for a whole lot less. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start up a SQL Server Express instance. You obviously can choose. It also supports BYOL, which is bring your own license uh, to Enterprise Edition. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to include the license included, the DB version, the instance class. We're going to select a micro. You'll notice T2 in here. This is the this is the um, addition, uh, how, how, how advanced it is. Um, for instance, T3 is a more recent addition than T2. T, T is an uh, indicator of a burstable instance class. You also have R, M, G for GPU, M is balanced, R is for memory, C is for compute. So all of these instant classes actually have direct representations to how the actual server on the back end is actually constructed. And we're just going to choose a magnetic. Provisioned IOPS is obviously you get to purchase very specific benchmarks for your um, success as far as the, the input output is concerned. Now, I've gone ahead and I've already made one of these, but we can go ahead and we can actually fill this in. And we're going to, you can establish obviously a VPC, which is a virtual private cloud security group, and this is where you can actually define your settings. This is really where the security implications of you and the cloud interfacing actually come into play. So you can control your firewall settings, but further than that, you can actually control individual aspects from within your VPC. Again, that's your virtual private cloud. And I don't want to say it that you just want to control it by specifically uh, augmenting firewall rules and being very restrictive about that. That's only part of the pie. Other aspects of it include managing who can access what, when, where, and why, um, as well as you know um, user accounts and that. But but the reality is is that you can actually control a whole lot more from within the day-to-day -day operations more so than just the firewall settings and that comes directly from the Amazon Web Services security lead. So now that we've gone ahead and done this um, we can also go ahead and choose the database port 1433 is the default SQL Server port okay um, we can also choose we cannot enable encryption here because we do not it does not support it you can see the blue thing below we have chosen Express which does not support encryption now again this is uh, I believe TDE and TDE is Transparent Database Encryption, which is also available for Oracle. Again, this is beyond the simple fact of file level encryption, okay, which comes de facto on, on the Amazon file systems. They also support, I think, 12 nines or something to that extent. Um, you can also have reduced redundancy storage regarding your S3 buckets, but that's more in the file system storage. Um, so let's just uh, define our backup window. Now, one thing I do want to point out is is the actual specific differences between RDS and an actual EC2 instance 
um, that is fully fleshed out with the operating system and everything. So some of the things are fully managed. There are good things and bad things associated with this. You don't get access to maintenance plans because they already do the backups as you saw in the little drop down menu. I don't know if you noticed it yet. Database mail, not available. Distributed queries, service broker, log shipping, Windows authentication. There's a lot of aspects in RDS which are very, very limited. You cannot make RDS and RDS SQL Server database as the back end to a SharePoint database. Why? Because you don't have SA authority on the RDS instance. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's a great thing if you have a very specific need for a specific database and you don't want to have incredible amounts of securitization reviews and patching and all of that jazz associated with it. You don't want to have to set up high availability swap overs. This is fully managed. If someone needs a very specific database to do XYZ BNF and unleash, you know, 20 to 30 analysts to, to query it and you want to pump in data through um, SSIS or what have you or um, one of the, the Amazon proprietary um, uh, ETL tool, then, then this is a great, great feature. Now I've gone ahead of course and I've just created this already, but let me actually initiate the create sequence so you can actually see it. Okay, it's being created. So I already have one that's been spun up to kind of speed up the process here. This is all being done in one take by the way. So, um, so uh, we go ahead and we can just reference it right in here. We can also view monitoring. Okay, so this is actually another aspect. This is this is actually not populating as of yet because we haven't really done a whole lot. But um, there's a lot of aspects of uh, Cloudflare and CloudWatch, which are two other aspects to actually to allow security administrators and administrators in general to actually watch out what's really happening in a given instance. So we can see here that. We already have the connectors, so let's just go ahead and fire up. Um, I already filled it in right here, um, so we just copied and pasted that out, okay? And um, we're gonna go ahead and connect, and we're connected. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the quick RDS walkthrough and the limitations. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ping me, or email me, or what have you via YouTube. Thanks.